anyway, so um, you asked for it, so I'm here to deliver. What's up guys, Michael here. And this video has been a very long time coming, but it all comes down to one thing. We together want to learn how to pray better. And the reason the church gives us so many gifts and so many riches and so many resources to pray is because she loves this. And as a former Anglican, now a member of the personal ordinary to the chair of St. Peter, I have spoken at length, it's no secret, that I love the Divine Worship Daily Office. No matter what version you, you're praying from, I think it is the bee's knees. It's the best way to pray. Uh, and I love the structure of it, the simplicity, and the way it can be built to a beautiful um, pair setting. It also can be done at a very intimate, you know, as a family. And it can be done alone in your study, just praying and seeking to worship God and be formed by that prayer. And so what I'm going to talk about today is something I've referenced many times, and it is how to use the St. Dunstan's plain song, Psalter, to edify and enrich both your private prayer as you pray the uh, daily office, but also um, if you're going to add and expand this. Um, and so I guess before you dive in, I have a couple of goals for you. So I'm going to put some timestamps down below to get to the, part, the parts that maybe you're most interested in, or if you come back and watch this and you just want to kind of revisit these things. But the things that I want to touch on today, um, number one is just kind of, you got to make sure what are your goals, right? So if your goal is to chant a simple yet reverent um, even song, you know, here at home in your office, uh, this book can definitely do that for you. If you're wanting to do something a little bit bigger as a parish, you want to um, grow into that sort of you know, big, you know, choral even song or a choral matin service. This book can, can give you some of the things. If you have no exposure to this, if you don't have a lived experience, you haven't seen this, you haven't experienced it from the Anglican side, um, this will help you a little bit. It'll give you some of that framework, but you're going to need more resources. You're going to need musicians. You're going to need um, some exposure to things. You know, it doesn't have to be anything too intense. Uh, the bigger, the better in terms of uh, choral matins, choral even song. You want to be able to have on a high holy day, especially um, followed by benediction, something like that. Um, so there's a couple references, uh, resources. I'll leave in the links below in the description below uh, that might be interesting to you. Obviously, this book, the Saint Dunstan plain song Psalter. I'll be referencing it throughout. I'll give you a couple page numbers and I'll put those in the description as well so you know some of these places to really dive into. And as I mentioned before, the primary office that I use is the Commonwealth Edition, which as you can see I've prayed the cover uh, emboss, you know, that gold right off. You can't see the Canterbury Cross anymore, which is a shame, but it just means I use it. So that you get that going for you. And I think the best way to do this though, as we're going to dive into it, is to, to go through an office together. And I'll show you some of the, I'll pause a little bit here and there and kind of show you how you could reference some of these things. I'm not going to sing everything. I'm not going to go through all of it once. I want to subject you to that to me doing it and just kind of awkwardly by myself. But I'll give you a little bit of taste of how you can do this at home alone. And I'll give you some hints for how to do that together with your family. But as I said, you, you really want to um, need a couple of different resources to really make this thing shine. Um, but both of those goals uh, are, are doable and the book can help you with that. So the second, uh, so I guess the last, the next thing that I want to say is how do you want to pray? There's so many options and so many ways to supplement the um, prayer office that we get in the daily office through divine worship that has been brought over um, from the Anglican patrimony that we get to share. Um, but it's, um, whether it's the North American or the Commonwealth edition, there's a few tweaks, a few different things you can look at. Um, but really, I want to give you the, um, the baseline right now. So if, if you want advice, if you're new to liturgical prayer, if this entire idea is like exciting and you're like, you get, you're like, get the theory and it sounds good, but you don't really know, how do you know if this is like, if you're doing it right? And you, like maybe you're a little bit scrupulous when it comes to liturgical law. And I mean, I'm right there with you. Um, you know, <laughs> scrupulous. Anyway, um, my advice to you is to start as simply as possible. Really, you want to just um, be as flexible as possible, but also if, and I, I mentioned this a second ago, if this is new to you, if you have not, if this is not like the, the experience you have. So I went to seminary, uh, I prayed in the choir, in my choir stall. I got to experience this there and in the parish setting. I This is something that was so deeply formative for me. I drank, drank it in. You know, I converted to Anglicanism before becoming Catholic, and it was this putting on a new way of thinking, a sacramental imagination, this approach to a beautiful Christian walk that's simple, reverent, and and historic. And uh, and there's so many riches and so many layers here. And now, as with humility, we come back into the full, uh, full communion with the Church through this gift as Pope Benedict wished for us to share, 
we need to know the patrimony, if you want to say it that way, use that ling uh, lingo, we need to know our patrimony before we share it. And if it's not your patrimony, if you're like, well, I don't even know what this is, I'm kind of like, I speak English, you know, enjoy this. This is a gift for you as well. Uh, and I'm just hoping that some of the resources I provide on this channel will help you um, as you're trying to like explore this and what is this ordinary thing all about. So, um, really, um, there's a couple of like sort of sticky wickets that people get into. Um, when it comes to some of these things but right now i'll come back to some of those in a minute maybe at the end but i want to dive into the, the the actual like the how do you do this okay so if you are praying from your um saying if you're praying from the commonwealth edition um or the north american edition first of all you if you again brand new to you, you need to check out the general instructions in the um, commonwealth edition and i believe in the north american edition i haven't got my copy in my hands yet i should get it tomorrow um but uh those general instructions are in the front of the book. It gives you like, how do you do this thing? It's an application of the general instructions of litur Liturgy of the Hours. There's some adjustments made um, for praying the office, this specific office, some of the things that are a little bit different. It's really important for you to do that if you want to do this right. And it, again, especially if this is not something that you know intuitively, if you haven't prayed a prayer book office sort of uh, religiously uh, over over time. So uh, it's as you can maybe tell it's evening ha here And so I'm gonna just kind of go through even song um, With the simplest setting. I'm not gonna add the supplements. Uh, there's a, both both editions of the text have a ton of rich poetic hindity and um, antiphons and and uh, Supplemental prayers that are added uh, that you can add in throughout the office to really help sort of build in that rich Catholic um, spirituality as you're praying the office, but this is really just, I'm giving you the basics, and you can get this first, and then you can add more later. Um, which might sound weird because I'm talking about singing it, but you can do the simplest form of the prayer book office and sing it, and, and you definitely should, um, because the Psalms especially are meant to be sung. All right, so we begin, um, excuse me, I'm smashing my mic around. We begin, um, um, page 421 of your Commonwealth edition, or whatever page number that is for evening prayer in the North American edition. If when I get my book, I'll update the description below with these two different page numbers for you. But you begin evening prayer um, with the, the the beginning, right? So again, I was going to mention this earlier. There is a whole part in the Pendleton's prayer book that gives you um, the ordinary, and it has the ways that we chant uh, the beginning part. So if the precis uh, or um, those or uh, that's something that you wanted to learn more, like the praying the suffrages of the priests, you want to learn how to chant these beginnings. I'll give you the way I do it, the way I was taught to do it when I was in seminary, and it's basically what I see in the St. Vincent's Plain Song Psalter, which is a comfort for me. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go through this. We'll come back and visit it in a minute. Sounds good. All right. O Lord, open now our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make sea to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Now, I did not follow exactly what is in the St. Dunstan Psalter because I wasn't looking at it. I was just looking at the text of evening prayer. So we're going to call this uh, the Little More Use, my house. I've named Little More after the house where St. John Henry Newman had his conversion, ex where he literally converted, where he was when he converted to Catholicism. Um, and I'm going to pause here and open up the ordinary so that you can, so I can say that exactly the same way that, uh, all right. So you're going to go to page 243 in your St. Dunstan's Plain Song Psalter. Uh, and it has a great list um, on page 242 and kind of the pages before that gives a little bit of sort of the normal, customary, what's kind of common in um, the patrimony. Uh, but um, you pop down, um, page 243 has the beginning that um, is both for Matins and Evensong, that penitential um, office at the beginning, the pre-office, uh, the for office, if you want to say it that way. Um, and then if you look on page 245, you do see the Gregorian chant, the square notes, and the, little, the, the cross there. So the reason we're making this cross, the Lord open our lips. If you don't know, uh, in the monastic office on which these offices are pulled from, um, matins, you're, you're, you're waking up, and you know, it's in the dark of the night. You know, you're, you're crossing, you're, you're asking God to bless you. This is the first thing you're saying, right? Um, and so matins and lauds have been squished together in um, the prayer book form. So there was only two offices originally, matins, 
morning prayer and even song, evening prayer. Um, and that was the prayer book office. And it was designed this way so that normal people, normal like lay people, could figure out how to do this. And also priests could figure out how to do this. Cranmer's famous uh, you know, criticism of the monastic office is that it took more time to figure out what to pray than to pray it. Um, and that um, may or may not have been true, uh, but um, be that as it may, the result in simplicity and beauty is something we can be grateful for. So anyway, page 245, um, you can see, O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths will show forth thy praise. And then it goes through the entirety there. Um, and it's, this is the simple, the simple tone is, again, what I would advise. Um, you're going to find the next page, he gives the solemn tone, which I have literally never heard this. And it, I, I may have heard it, and I've just forgotten it, but exactly the way it's, it's positioned here, I don't know if I've ever heard this chanted this way. Now, I've heard beautiful choral settings of, um, of like matins and even song. And you can YouTube that, something about a bird, uh, like the great service, or, or any of these things you'll see. Um, in any of the, like, the choral even songs, you'll get the, the suffrages in these amazing choral settings where it starts off with that same introduction of, Oh Lord, open our lips, and the entire choir answers, and it's you know, mind-blowingly beautiful. That's what I've heard, but this solemn tone business is new to me doesn't mean it's not legitimate, it just wasn't part of what I experienced in my formative years. Um, anyway, then it um, goes through the entirety of the office, right? So you, um, he gives on um, page, they, I say he, it was a, a general editor, but um, it goes through the entire ordinary, this is on page 247, um, and it gives you good, a good idea of the structure, the sorts of things that are going to happen. There's a few little points that are different, so follow the rubrics or the direction that you see in um, your prayer book. There's a couple of things. I'll come back later and talk about the insertion points as we go through this thing. Um, but the directions they give you um, for, for matins, you're going to say the venite, the penite, as they say in England, uh, and maybe indeed as we all should say. Um, you're going to say that in the, in, in the morning. Even song is a bit more brief of an office in that sense. So you're going to open with um, the opening prayers as we did those versicles, and then Go straight to the Psalms. If you're going to sing a hymn, you could pop it in um, following the first lesson. Um, but we go through the Psalms. And to do the Psalms, you just need, if you want to chant them, um, using the St. Dunstan Psalter. Uh, again, another point, I'm, I mentioned I'm just gonna, these things pop in here as we go through. Um, there is a lot of online debate, um, strangely to me, about whether or not it's more patrimonial to um, shorten. Uh, to do the sort of the, the allowed brief uh, version of the Psalter where you, there's, a, there's a lectionary. In, in North America, uh, there is a, an option, an optional daily lectionary that gives one psalm per day. Um, and this was actually started in the early days of the American, um, the American Episcopal Church where there was you know, experiments made again and again and again systematically over time to increase and to change around the number of proper psalms uh, Cramer's vision was that there's like, like a very few proper psalms. And there are a few more expanded, a few more holy days throughout the year. But for the most part, the goal was reading the psalms. And the, the Psalter itself has a, if you've seen your prayer book, if you've got an old book of common prayer or any of these prayer books, you'll see it says day, whatever, morning and evening. And that was intentional. That's not just like a fun thing that they just threw in for some reason. This is an additional thing you can pray. That, that was the original design of the prayer book. And this is literally the most, quote, patrimonial way to pray the, um, the prayer book office. Now, if you're doing it the other approved way, that's fine. Like, if you don't have, feel like you don't have time or you like praying on, like, one psalm, that's totally fine. I mean, it's a few more minutes and you're getting more scripture, and I think that's pretty beautiful. So I'm all about getting that. And sometimes it's a little bit harder because you've got to actually pray more. You have to take a little bit more time um, to do it. But if you're reading morning prayer, it doesn't take that long. Okay, so if you're, um, today is the 13th of March as I record this. So, um, it, I'm going to page 89 in my St. Dunstan's Plain Song Psalter, and man, is that a mouthful to say every time I say it. Um, and you'll notice that it is tone two. Um, I've given a link before to a YouTube channel that has the entire playlist of all of these chanted, um, which I advise you check it out. And if you're new to Square Notes, there's lots of resources out there. Um, you really can go through a deep rabbit hole to figure out how to, how to read this kind of music. It's beautifully simple. It's easier than reading normal, standard, modern uh, notation. But anyway, um, I'm going to assume you've done a little bit of that homework, and you can read this along with me. But you'll see that the tone uh, beginning on page 89, the first uh, psalm of evening prayer, um, 
it, it, uh, there's an, an intonation at the beginning. Um, and with the Psalms, you don't do, you do the intonation for the first line and you don't do it the rest of the time. So it's, Save me, O God, for the waters are come even unto my soul. I stake fast in the deep mire where no ground is. I am coming to deep waters so that the floods run over me. I am weary of crying. My throat is dry. My sight faileth for waiting so long upon my God. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that are mine enemies and would destroy me guiltless are mighty. I paid them the things that I never took. God, thou knowest my simpleness, and my faults are not hid from thee. Let not them that trust in thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my cause. Let not those that seek thee be confounded through me, O Lord God of Israel. And why? For thy sake have I suffered reproof. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, even an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath even eaten me, and the rebukes of them that rebuked thee are fallen upon, are fallen upon me. I wept and chastened myself with fasting, and that was turned to my reproof. I put on sackcloth also, and they jested upon me. They that sit in the gate speak against me, and the drunkards make songs upon me. But the Lord, but Lord, I make my prayer unto thee in an acceptable, in an acceptable time. Hear me, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy even in the truth of thy salvation. Take me out of the mire that I sink not, or let me be delivered from them that hate me out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood drown me, neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is comfortable. Turn thee unto me according to the multitude of thy mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. O haste thee and hear me. Draw nigh unto my soul and save it. O deliver me because of mine enemies. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So you can see, you're following the tone. I made some mistakes on that one, so it's fine. The Lord was uh, pleased with the joyful song that we sang there. Um, and if you want to look through the, the, the tone a couple times before you begin, that's totally fine, especially as this is new to you. I haven't sung through this entire Psalter. The Psalter we used when I was in seminary was different, so the tones were slightly different assigned to each psalm, which is a little bit confusing when you're used to singing a psalm with a certain tone. Um, but for the sake of um, ease of use and application, there's two points I wanted to make. So if you're praying the North American um, office, this is almost the exact same Psalter. It's the, uh, the 1928 American Book of Common Prayer Coverdale Psalter. Um, the the Commonwealth edition has the 1662, the original um, Coverdale Psalter, or the original Coverdale Psalter. But since the 1662 prayer book uh, Psalter is almost identical, there's a few words that the 28 prayer book modernized. They tried to change a couple of things modern to that um, that time period. So definitely not sort of modern in the way that we use it. It's still you know um, prayer book English, sacral English as it's called, or sacral if you want to say it that way. Um, but the point is the there is a rubric allowed um, in the Commonwealth Editions uh, rules um, that 
if you're singing the Psalms, another translation of the Psalter is approved. This is an approved, another Catholic edition, you know, an approved translation of the Psalter um, is fine for use. This Psalter is approved. Obviously, it's approved because it's used by um, the North American Ordinariate. So you're actually free to pray through the St. Nelson Psalter, which is um, the Commonwealth edition. Uh, there's a few that is... So you're free to pray using this Psalter, conscience cleared that you're using an approved translation because it matches almost verbatim the um, North American Psalter. There's a few words where they went back to 1662 Coverdale, one, to confuse you, but two, um, because it, they say that it matched the, um, the original languages more fully, more appropriately than the updated word. They didn't quite match. Okay, so... As you go through the Psalms, you pray the rest of your office, you sing them, and you get to the end of the Psalter uh, for that day, and then you're going to read the lesson. Now, the St. Nathan's Plain Song Psalter does not give the lessons. Uh, there's a table of lessons in the beginning of whatever edition of the prayer book that you're using. Um, if you're in the Commonwealth, then if you're in the Commonwealth, if you're using the Commonwealth edition, it's going to have that um, here on its, uh, in the book itself. Or you can be what some like to say, extra patrimonial, and read out of a Bible. Um, if you've got the Bible, it's great. Especially when reading in public, the normal actual, the, the Anglican tradition and just good Catholic sound thing you're teaching is, if you're reading the Bible publicly, you should read out of a Bible publicly. So have a, um, you know, if, if you're doing this in a parish, have, a, have like a, a substantial enough, you know, text, and it's actually have the Bible. When I was in seminary, we had a really huge, like, you know, there was an, it was an RSV that we would actually mark with the sticky notes to put on you know, where we're reading so that all the readers then could just, they prepared ahead of time, they knew the readings they had, they were assigned, they, you don't get surprised with a lectionary, that's the beauty of a lectionary, you're never surprised what what, uh, what, what Father's going to be teaching on. Um, well, you might be, but you won't be surprised by what the lessons are, um, what text he's basing that off of, supposedly. Anyway, he should be. Um, and uh, and so that's, that's, that's what you do. So here we go, um, this is the Monday after the third Sunday in Lent, and so my book is all cattywampus right now. Um, but um, I don't recommend, uh, you don't have to chant the, um, the, the lessons if you'd like to, because you just want, you really want to practice that chanting. I can put a link below to a resource that actually for how to, how to point this, if you're going to sing it publicly, you can do that. Um, we did that in, uh, when I was in seminary um, for uh, whenever we would use the, the offices, the, the, that we'd use the even song as the four office, you know, before uh, mass. So that is an option that you can definitely do. Um, but for um, for the sake of going through this this lesson uh, through the through Lent, the prayer book office is taking us through a really beautiful cycle. Um, we're going through the, the journey with the Israelites, and then also touching on the Gospels in the morning, and then uh, the epistles from Paul in the evening, and. Um, so you would just begin, you know, with a lesson from such and such. The rubrics for how to introduce your lesson are going to differ slightly depending on, the, on which edition of the prayer book you're using. But the Commonwealth Editions um, rubrics, which I will turn to just for your own sake, and because I know I'll misquote it if I do not actually read what it says um, on page 16 of the Commonwealth Commonwealth Daily I said Book of Common Prayer, the Commonwealth Edition of the Daily Office is uh, on point paragraph number um, 20. At morning and evening prayer, there are two lessons, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. Before every lesson, the reader shall say, here beginneth such a chapter or verse of such a chapter of such a book. And after every lesson, here endeth the first or second lesson. So we don't say the word of the Lord, thanks be to God, as you do in Mass. Um, and that's just a part of the office tradition and um, and so it's just a slight difference, a variation there. Get used to that over time and the more you do it. So the reading is Exodus uh, 13, verses 1 to 16. That's the lesson appointed for tonight. So I could say something like a reading from, or a reading, a lesson from the book of Exodus, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse, or something to that effect. You can, you know, however, somewhere in that, that line. That's the way I always said it in seminary and my serving in churches. And that's just natural, and I have to force myself to do it any any differently. But you follow the rules, you do the thing. Okay, and then you read. The Lord said to Moses, "Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first, whatever is the first to open the womb among the sons of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. 
read the entirety of the reading. Here endeth the first lesson. Now, when we are praying evening prayer, if you don't have a hymn lined up, you can appoint a hymn. One of the hymns that is in the North American office, so it's actually one of my favorite hymns that we sang, uh, that I, one of my favorite hymns for the evening office is the Fos Hilleron, um, which it comes from the Eastern tradition. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Byzantine prayer. Um, and it's this beautiful hymn about you know, the evening lights, you know, and um, so the, one of the beautiful settings, it's a, uh, a plain chant setting that's in the 1982 uh, hymnal. You can find that in your library, if you, you know, public library, if you don't have one in, in your own library. But it begins, O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thou art worthy at all times to be praised with happy voices. O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Did that from memory. I was probably wrong on some of those tones. If you and you were at home, you pour, cracked open your 1982 hymnal to double check that I changed some words and I pray the saying that's slightly wrong, but you get the idea. A simple hymn like that works beautifully, even if you're at home, you're making a joyful noise unto our Lord, and you're uh, placing yourself in His presence with the angels who are singing hymns of praise, and you're also the, 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 to the context, the, the topic of that song um, is so fitting for an evening office, so it's really, really fitting. There's in either prayer book you're using, there are often going to be suggested or pointed hymns, office hymns, for this as well, which you can definitely and, and should definitely read them and sing them if you can if you have the notation for it. There's every one of these are famous hymns. You can always find a YouTube video, the glory of the internet, uh, of someone um, singing that. So I would recommend that to you as well. Um, and then after you read the first lesson and uh, the office hymn, whatever your hymn is going to be. You're going to say the Magnificat or sing the Magnificat. Of course, again, our friends in the St. Dunstan's Plain Song Psalter from Lancelot Andrews Press, um, they've really come to, our, come to our rescue here in a lot of ways. Towards the end of the book, they have all the canticles, and there's a ton of tones for each of them. So you don't have to sing the same setting all the time. But I would recommend singing one setting that you really love and getting that just sort of ingrained in your family. So when you start to sing the Magnificat, you really... Um, it's just natural to you. Now, my favorite hymn, my favorite setting of the Magnificat is um, on page 469, it is tone eight. It's um, the same setting that is found in the 1940 um, Episcopal Hymnal or the 1982. And uh, I'd recommend that to you if you want to really just um, to sing. It's very singable. And this is a, a very ancient um, uh, plain chant mode. I will not sing the entire thing to you. Um, well, heck, maybe I will. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for behold from hands, mm -mm. for behold from hands forth, a generation shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, 
as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world with, world without end. Amen. You see, that's what happens when I tell you I'm not going to sing, and then I sing and I make mistakes. But um, it really is absolutely a beautiful setting of the Magnificat, and there are other more beautiful, other beautiful settings as well. There's plain uh, Anglican chant, uh, which are usually choral settings um, where there are multiple parts given, four parts usually, um, and they're really wonderful and they're very singable. Um, one of the uh, one of my favorites of those is the setting by in the I think in the 1940 hymnal. I think it is. It's number 655, I believe, which is the, um, the setting by William Crotch, who is, uh, which is an absolutely beautiful and very, very, very singable version of the Magnificat. So check that out as well. After the mag, you're going to read the second lesson, um, which in this case, I'm going to flip open our Commonwealth edition to go to the lesson from Ephesians 3. So you're going to read your lesson. Here endeth the second lesson, and then return to sing the Nunc, the Nunc Dividus. Um, and uh, this prayer is, um, again, incredibly beautiful. And there's so many different beautiful settings of this. And there's so many riches in the St. Dunstan's Psalter, if, especially if this is new to you, this is such a great resource to just really dive into and take your time you know, for, for a week or two to sing the same setting, to really let that kind of become normal. And you'll find the one that just like, it's like a home, you know, like a home base, you know, uh, setting. There's so many, um, but um, yeah, it's a really, really singable and beautiful, and and it's very short. Um, so on page 475 of the Psalter is the first um, setting of tone, tone 1A, and they have a little note that it's in the hymnal 1940 as well. And if you look there, it's going to be the more modern, um, modern notation. If that's something that's easier for you, which is nice too, if you want to. Um, plink it out on a piano to really get, get used to the, um, the intervals, which I definitely recommend doing. If that's something you can do, if you can read sheet music at all, it's definitely a benefit. Um, and if you can figure that out on the piano, it helps to sort of figure some of those things out if they're new to you. I'm gonna stumble my way through this one, and um, we'll go to the next part of the office here. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine, eye, <clears throat> for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So you can see, I screwed that one up a little bit, and it's fine. I'm not really familiar with that setting, so I just wanted to go for a quick one with the first one I could find. Um, but it's a beautiful setting, and as you notice, there's a couple times when I've crossed myself at the beginning of the Gospel Canticles, both the Magnificat and the Nunc Dimittis, I you cross myself at the beginning. Um, there's a few references in the St. Dunstan Psalter that'll give you t time for when those cues are, which are customary. You're not required, uh, but it's a great and very pious habit that so many who have prayed these offices have done, so I'd recommend you do it. Um, but you are not obligated. I will not force you. I won't even know if you do it, unless you tell me. And then we'll sing, uh, you can chant recto tono if you like, the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then, of course, there's the section, the next section, which, um, if you are not a cleric, you do not say, the Lord be with you and with, your, with thy spirit. You're going to say, O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And you can say, usually, or sing, or chant recto tono. This is not a, um, again, we're not in mass. This is not quite that level. And um, the beautiful settings of the Our Father that you can be sung. But usually at this point in the office, it's just a, a simple chanted. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And of course, you get to now the versicle and responses. These are the prayers. And there's going to be some very significant differences between now the two versions of the office, primarily in the sense that there's a couple of additional prayers. There's a ton more options that are provided and kind of commonly collated in the North American um, office, and I, they're all valid prayers. You can pray them in that order. The things you have to pray uh, to, to make your office count are the initial prayers, changing, of course, if you don't have a monarch, um, O Lord, save the king, and if you have a monarch, <laughs> you can pray for your king. Um, but if you don't, we the custom is to say um, for the second versicle, so the beginning, O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is another that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Now you can verify whether or not I chanted those correctly by returning to the Psalter and looking on the ordinary page towards the end. Um, there's on page 250 um, is where the, these are chanted in um, the ordinary um, tone that we're going to do here. And you get halfway down to the bottom, and there's a part where um, they give peace in our time, O Lord. And you'll notice that the words here are slightly different. Um, just copy the words down from your prayer book, and they're going to be, For there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. Now you're going to turn, at least in my book you're turning, and you're going to pray the collect for the day. Now this is Lent, so of course the second collect I'm going to pray is going to be the collect for Ash Wednesday. The first is whatever is proper to the day, which in this case would be, because Lent, there's collects that are proper for every day of Lent. Um, and if you're praying and there's no colic that's proper to that day, the rule is to pray the preceding Sunday, which is within that week. Uh, so that's colic of the day. Or if there's a saint day, that kind of thing, you pray that there. Um, so you pray those two colics. And then the colic for peace, the colic for aid against perils. Those are the, the, the final two colics. Um, so there's those three set, whatever the day is, those other two. And the fun and patrimonial reference to inquires in places where they sing an anthem may follow. Sing an anthem if you've got one. Always sing an anthem if you got it. Um, and then um, you wrap it up. At minimum, you want to say the prayer of St. Chrysostom and then the grace. So the prayer of St. Chrysostom, interestingly enough, is never chanted. People don't, this is towards the end of the office uh, and um I just remember being told someone had in my in our seminary prayer book, the one that was in the sacristy that everyone used who was leading, um, someone had like gone through the trouble of like pointing it and they're like, Yeah, you can chant it if you want, but nobody chants it. Um so just I mean you can go for it, not give the fuck, chant all you want. It's not customary though to to chant it. Um we say it together. And you can do recto tone for almost anything to be heard and communication if you're in a big space. Um, but it's not customary to chant that. So pray the Saint prayer of Saint Chrysostom and then the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. And you're done. Now, if you're in North America and you're praying out of the North American office, I'm in North America, but praying from the Commonwealth office, um, because that's just how I roll, They, uh, there is um, that let us bless the Lord, thanks be to God, and then the grace. Um, that is 
was inserted. If you read in the St. Dunstan's Plain Songs Altar, they shoved that in as well. Um, it was in the 28 prayer book. Maybe. The office traditionally ends with the grace. No matter what, that's the idea. You end at the grace. So there you have it. Um, leave any questions you have below. I'll be really happy to go through anything more. If you want more tips for um, singing, obviously I'm not a professional singer. I do the best I can. I love singing. I love singing the office in particular, and I'd love to do more videos on the office walking through this with you. I mean, heck, I'd love to be able to do this together with someone else uh, in person. My family and I do it together as much as we can. We're building that back into our routine. We did it every night, uh, especially when I was in seminary, we praying, prayed evening prayer. Um, and then after we came into the church, we prayed evening prayer together, at least, uh, as a family saying, sing the Psalms, uh, we sing a hymn and I, I really love it and I miss it. Uh, I want to do more of that. So we're bringing that back into the life of our family. It just got hectic, you know? Um, but, uh, our, our kids really love the music and having these hymns that are just familiar and it's a beautiful and rich thing. So I just, I, I give this to you as hopefully a gift. If it's useful, please let me know, hang around, subscribe all that good stuff. I really love to get to know you, leave questions, and I'd be happy to answer. In the meantime, may the Lord bless us and keep us, make his face shine upon us, and give us his peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Peace. Mm -hmm.